Welcome to Have Movies Will Game, the only podcast on the globe where we take you, our friendly listener, through the best and worst movies of yesterday and today, and then discuss ways that you can play them at your gaming table. In every episode, our intrepid hosts, Matthew, Dusty, and Nathaniel, will filibuster fondly over facts and feelings of your favorite films, and then get to the glorious gaming goodness, giving Game Masters great gimmicks on generating golden genius. Have Movies Will Game, brought to you through the electronic wonder of the internet. Now, let's start the show! Hi, everybody. Welcome to the podcast. Uh, this week, we're doing uh, Atomic Blonde. Yes. And I'm Matthew. And I'm Dusty. And I'm Nathaniel. Hello. So I I like this movie. I had uh, a problem with it. I wasn't expecting to like it. Um, Why not? It's basically John Wick with a female was this John Wick. Pre-John Wick? No, this was, this was after. This okay. was like a year or so after. This was last year. Yeah. Oh, it was? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Yeah, the the director of of this movie, uh, David Leach, was producer on John Wick, and most of the crew that worked on John Wick came over to work on this movie. So I was going to say, I really all the action, I I loved it, and I love the brutality of it. I did like the action. Yeah. So was this was the first fun. time you you saw it, Nathaniel? Yep. Sweet. So. I was waiting for Matthew to finish watching it so I could delete it off my media server and <laughs> never watch it again. <laughs> so you watched this today, right, Matthew? Yeah. For yeah. The first it was fantastic. Time? I watched um, it again today. There was one thing, and I'm not sure if it was a stylistic choice on the part of the actor, actress, or the, on the part of the director, but I didn't like her monotone whisper delivery all throughout the movie. I did not like that. I felt oh, like when she phoned in the entire movie. Oh, wait, spoilers. Yeah. There are spoilers if you're listening. Oh, yeah, and this one, it actually counts because it's a fairly recent movie. Yeah. So, so. Yeah, we got spoilers, folks. Yeah, we stop, got spoilers all stop, up in here. <laughs> stop listening. Go watch the movie, then come back if you care about that kind of thing. That said, it doesn't really matter because you can see the plot coming a mile away. So No, no, that. it's it's really subtle. <laughs> the twist at the end. That's Gee, I wonder who Satchel is. I knew that in the first five minutes of the movie. Uh, for those that are interested, it is based off of a graphic novel called The Coldest City by Anthony Johnson. Um, that's why it does look like very much in it's a graphic novel world with the colors and the angles. And, mm. uh, but yeah, so I'm sorry, I, I interrupted you. So what, what are some of the things else that you, you were going on about? Oh, um, I just didn't like the monotone delivery. I was, not a, I was not a friend. I think that was just her character. Well, I'm not general. sure because her action was, was well done. Mm-hmm. Um, her facial expressions were well done, but it, it was coupled by this monotone delivery of all the things that she has to say. Not just that, but she had pauses in everything that she said. It was, there like, was dead air, yeah. essentially. I, I took that as, okay, so one of the things that I really like about the movie is, and I, and I watched the, I listened to the commentary on it too, and it was something that I picked up really, really quickly on this movie. There was a lot of of almost breaking of the fourth wall in this. And I think that was a lot of what you saw because she's telling you what's happening rather than you're seeing everything. I mean, you're seeing everything through a flashback in her eyes. That may be something, so, one of the reasons you didn't like it because it was a, a, normally it's show, don't tell. Oh, no, 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 no. I actually really like it when a movie is told through someone's perspective, such as the best fucking example ever, The Usual Suspects. But the usual suspects does it in the concept of an unreliable narrator. Mm-hmm. I love unreliable narrator as a plot device, as a storytelling technique in all kinds of fiction. I was really hoping they would go with that in this, mm-hmm. but they didn't. See, I'm not a fan of the whole two weeks earlier uh, beginning. I'm, I'm really not. Uh, they, the, uh, they made it work, yeah. but I think that's just, that's limp-wristed storytelling to me. They did a good job with yeah. it. I just, I personally wouldn't have done it that way. Yeah. Because I just I find it it's it's hackneyed. It's been it's been used a lot. Yeah, it's it it's been. it's it's cliche, it's student film shit. I like well it. I well <laughs> I did. I liked, I liked, it with this I liked the movie. Yeah. I yeah. Don't get me wrong. I, I think it worked for the movie if they had done it a little tighter, mm-hmm. like if they, they had been more tightness in some of the scenes. Uh but I hate it in television. Yeah. I hate it. Yeah. I Television's it. a yeah. lot different with, with using that in my opinion. Yeah. 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 Um, so it is. It was set in the backdrop of the last few days of the crumbling Cold War era in Berlin, which I loved. Yeah, that was great. Just the stylization, beautiful. 
I love that era, and I and I also love uh, just movies of that time period, especially spy movies with that in that. Oh, era. and the music. Oh, oh the yes. music. It's fantastic. There was there was a, during the commentary, the director and the editor uh, was talking about how you know that opening sequence where she's walking down the street to get into the into the embassy. On set, they had these huge speakers so they could play that song so she could walk in time. Nice. Yeah. And the whole, they, they wanted to make the whole movie because that was the, that was the beginning stages and the rush of MTV. And they, so they wanted to make the whole movie like a large music video. And I think that worked well. I mean, the music was really good throughout this whole film. The sad version of the 99 Luft Balloons. Yes. Oh, I, I'm giving that song. <laughs> And Tyler Bates, he did the score for the actual movie. And he took hints from the 1980s and then tied them all together in this like contemporary sense that brings a sense of urgency to every scene. So there's, there's always like, there's a, there's a lot of almost like needle drops on, on old records. I mean, not that sound, but that's that tension that, that brings, um, the scene where Charlize Theron's character and, uh, Sophia Butella's character, where they, where they finally like get together and, and and then it's all of a sudden cuts back to the interrogation room and he's like so you made contact with the operative operative i mean there's that great set of music beforehand and then it just gone which was great in my opinion but the soundtrack there were songs was, i had <clears throat> forgotten about on well, that i was really pleased to be well there were songs to. in the movie that aren't actually on the so- soundtrack like if you go to spotify and unfortunately you know that, that sucks. happens a lot but there movies. are people that piece together the actual mm-hmm. soundtrack and made a thank playlist. you youtube yes and uh, it is it is a really really good soundtrack, and if you're if you're into that time frame, it's beautiful. I liked the music that they played. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, it hit all the nostalgia spots. Yeah. But at the same time, I was like, play play maybe one or two deeper cuts. Like, oh, you're oh, this is nothing but nostalgic music. Why not? Okay, you're you're okay. You're playing Joy Division. Why not? play a deeper cut from that or I was just like I just want to hear something different I think but I'm also admittedly audience. I'm kind of an audio hipster so yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think I think deeper cuts I, I get what you're saying but at the same time I think they wanted it recognizable to set the scene exactly I think I if you it. went too deep people would be like I don't know what this is and it would be lost on like I enjoyed that they used some 80s punk it wasn't all just pop mm-hmm. I enjoyed that a lot yeah, um, yeah, because, yeah. and uh what was the industrial? Was that there was an industrial song ministry in there. Mm-hmm. that was Stigmata. ministry? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Do, do, that's do, off of yeah, uh, yeah. That's do, off of the do, land do, of rape and honey. Do, that was all. Yeah. All, it, all it was Love missing was a something from Pretty Hate Machine, which was eighty nine, I believe. I think so. Yeah. That was. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think Pretty Hate was eighty nine. I do that at the club sometimes when a girl asks me for eighties music. I just slip in some Pretty Hate Machine. <laughs> yeah. I know that's not what she's looking for, but I don't care. So there's. I made comment at the at the top of the of of our. Of our talking here that it was directed by one of the producers of john wick and there yeah. are there are a lot of influences you can see from john wick in i movie. i loved it and i was glad to see a, a female protagonist fighting i wish they had let her wear flats i wish they had let her wear clothes that didn't bother me half so of much. her scenes were underwear lingerie or naked your first introduction to her she's naked though to be fair Come they on. do the same thing with bond so actually, the uh, like the, Bond runs around in his underwear it was, or a tux. It was clearly underwear directed tux. and written by a man. Hang on with that. I mean, you're right. You're not. You're not wrong. But hang on. Uh, the commentary on that the director talked about when he was doing his elevator pitch to Charlize Theron, that opening scene where she's in the tub and she's naked. That's what hooked her into doing the. Movie. I loved the play of muscle on her back because it showed the strength of her. Mm-hmm. Like when yeah, when she gets up and okay. she goes like this, it wasn't just some demure. Yeah, every, in the woods. it's just like every other scene with her naked or in lingerie or in her underwear. But some of us to, like sex, to, Nathaniel. <laughs> like to the point that when that second, the second, the other woman, the mm-hmm. other female in the whole movie was introduced, the moment she was introduced, the moment you see her, I just knew they're going to be fucking. Well, yeah, and that's yeah. even in the trailer. It was that was a given. I never watched the trailer. Oh, okay, yeah. but I I think you know we we grew up watching you know James Bond and all those movies, and it was just a given that James Bond was going to dress in a handsome manner. He was going to be sexy. He was going to have a good accent, and he was he was going to 
have sex with as many women as he could through yeah. that whole movie. It, it's part of the spy thing. And I, and I, that's where I was going with this. I think that's a spy thing and, and flip it on a woman and a, a woman that's, you know, had been empowered and has this position. She has, you know, she, that's how she, what she's bred into is you use sex as a psychological ploy to get what you want. This is an intro. This is a good moment for me to talk about the fact that I generally don't like espionage movies unless okay. they are more heady and mm-hmm. subtle espionage movies. Oh, what was that one with uh, Cumberbatch that just came out about Enigma? The Deep oh, Machine? Uh, Have you that's, seen that? Um, that's one you'd like. If you like a heady espionage with no sex, that's I the one. the original Tinker Taylor Soldier Spy. Very that's good. a good movie. The Third Man with Orson Welles. Uh-huh. Well, uh, it's I, Orson yeah, Well. Exactly. I know, but those are my favorite kind of espionage movies. Agreed. Or uh, either that or like the hard-boiled private movies like mm. Maltese Falcon mm. or those where it's more conversation and it's more discussion and it's more like what is actually going on. That's what I tend to get in more. So I like the action from this. I thought that the espionage stuff was just like, oh, God, it's just Lady James Bond. Okay. That's what I'm getting well, into. Well, I, I thought it is Lady James Bond. John Wick. Yeah. Have you seen Three Days of the Condor? I have not heard of that. It is a late 70s Robert Redford uh, espionage movie. You might really dig it. Oh, I'm writing it down right now. All right. And check out that uh, it is one very with Cumberbatch, too. That was really good. The Imitation Game. That's what that was. That's what that was. You need oh, to see I've that. Oh, I've heard of that. It's okay. very it good. fantastic. Uh, Three Days of the Condor is very story-driven. It's not... I mean, because it comes from a different time in, in Hollywood, where movies were more story driven without a lot of explosions and a lot of fighting. Uh, it's a very, it's, it's a dry movie, but it's good. Actually, I'll tell you what, to me, this movie felt less like lady James Bond and more like, Oh, what lady burn notice. Like, Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. That's oh, okay. Yeah. You know, I can go with that. Cause I, I, I really liked burn notice. I like any movie with a woman fighting realistically. That that's yeah. one of my things. That was pretty cool. The fights were amazing. Like, oh. growing up, I liked Eon Flux. Oh, but that was yes. over-the-top silly fight. And she died at the end of every one, and it was wonderful. Yeah, I know. They were and all, like, Charlize compartmentalized. did yeah. reprise that yeah. role. So. And it was also my uh, also my favorite villain, Trevor Goodchild. I want to be him enough. when I grow up. Who played but him in the movie? Who cares? He I wasn't Trevor remember. Goodchild. That movie was yeah. horrible. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, it was horrible. Yeah. <laughs> the, the so that first big fight scene where she's at, at her her lover's apartment and she turns on George Michael as a distraction on that beautiful sound system that's sitting there. So the the director went to the the stunt team and said, "Here's what I want. I want to have a counterbalance scene where she flies off a railing and into the you know two or three stories below. Everything else, you guys go ahead and do and figure it out on your own." Now go. go. And right. they did that whole scene, and he was just blown away as a director. And that scene looked really, really good. And most of it was done in one take. Uh, or not one take, sorry, one pan. One, yeah. one setup. Not, that would have been done hard to do in one take. I also like that she didn't kill people unless they were people that needed to be killed. Mm-hmm. And even when the people were trying to capture her, like the Russians in the th- movie theater and whatnot, or all that stuff. Stabbed she, the guy in the yeah. cheek with the keys. She, but she <laughs> didn't kill people. I don't think she killed anyone until she killed Percival. Yeah. I don't. No, yeah. no. Who'd she kill before that? Uh, Percival. The, well, there's a whole uh, bunch of NPCs that she killed. But yeah. Like, th- there was, uh, some uh, of they the, weren't named, but. Just the, like, guards that came three. after. Yeah. When? Well, when in, did that, she, in that when apartment, did she, she kill, no, in I the apartment, she no, the cops. Kneecap, she didn't kill any up, of the cops. Kneecap follow up the body to the head. I mean, there yeah, was a really? lot of people killed. Did she go killed. for the? No, yeah, yeah. Well, in the apartment because it was it was did cripple use, kill, cripple kill. No, she did that at the very end of the movie. That was such a gorgeous you know you might fight. be right. I was, but I think in the it. in the whole fight in her stairway scene, the dead guy's apartment against the cops. I don't think she killed a single cop. She didn't even use the guns. She. Beat them, took their guns, hit oh, them with the right. guns, yeah, and, and then, then threw and then the guns it away. Apart and threw it yeah. away. That's right. Yeah. She, I don't think she killed anyone until she killed Percival. Well, then she made it up with a lot of killing. And then after that, <laughs> it was just death, 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 death. Yeah. Honestly, I I wasn't expecting to like this, but I really, really did. And oddly enough, the twist at the end got me. Now it may have been because I wasn't giving it my full attention at the time, and just kind of you know watching it. But that actually got me. That, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, d- I didn't see that because the moment she I, I gave just that look to him, I just I didn't like, care. 
the moment, the very beginning, when when John Goodman comes in, she's like, I don't want him here. And that line and the look shared between them. Yeah. I knew that they were friends. So I just did a quick check. Uh, she did kill 18 people in this movie. Most of which I think were at the end of the movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that entire flood of guards. That's that stairway scene. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The ending. There is this great, this great camera shot that I love, and it's really simple to pull off. It was just a camera on a pole, mm-hmm. and she hits the guy, and he's going down the stairs. She's above him, mm-hmm. and the camera follows his fall, and it's mm-hmm. really tight on his face. And then, just as he's about to hit the steps, it goes wide. Yeah. So you see that he's falling down the stairs, and then it goes to the side, and it's his head. Bouncing mm-hmm. like a dodgeball yeah. off the stairs. And it is, oh. Well, the cinematographer uh, it just does some beautiful things and has a lot of those close-up shots, like, to give more of the scene. And and by that, just those, like, just those static close-up shots that I just love of something that you might not see as important then, but it's, in, like, with the, with, like, yeah. with the, with the, yeah. in, the insides of the watch, where you saw the name and then the numbers, which you know are important, but not really sure why. I also like the duration more. of the cuts, too. Yeah. Um, it wasn't the fast cut a la like a war movie or, mm-hmm. or born or anything like that, where it's like fast cut, fast cut, fast cut, fast cut, fast cut, establish. Yeah, all those fast cuts. And what I liked about this movie is it wasn't just the fast cuts. Like every fast cut was like half a beat longer. And it enabled you to take in more of the room mm-hmm. and more of the hits. I think a lot more people got actually hit in the face during I would this ag- movie. I would agree with that. Because that that's that's the trick. It's it's showing it and then, then showing the reaction. Mm-hmm. Um, but on this, it was punch, follow through, guy goes flying, then cut. Mm-hmm. Which I really, really liked. And it's really hard to pull. The That whole ending scene, that ending fight scene, is a beautiful piece of work, in my opinion. It reminded me of what we were talking earlier of uh, Daredevil in the hall, where he's just exhausted. He's been fighting for so long, and fighting is fucking hard. Are you wait? Are you talking about the gunfight in the Russian place uh, when she's mm, shepherding no. uh, Spyglass and he's oh, shot? Yeah, that and was really good. That I fight. Agree. Oh, I yeah. love yeah. those fights where it just shows yeah, how we're on the same page. Though. How yeah. rough we and keep how draining back to that fight scene. Dusty, you need to watch Daredevil. <laughs> yeah, you do. No, Daredevil I do. I do. season one, episode two. It is the best fight maybe scene. I'll, maybe on I'll television. start it up late tonight. Yeah. Just, just yeah. You keep saying that. Just, just watch it. I just go for all three knuckles. Okay, we're gonna pause yeah. this and we're gonna watch this right now. <laughs> right, we'll be back. So, the, the, I mean, this, no, really, I'm down. We should do this. <laughs> <laughs> the that that fight scene in in the in the stairwell, it's executed so perfectly, and and I was looking. I honestly thought it was a one camera pan for the entire time. No, but it was edited so fucking beautifully that it was just, it looked like it was a one single pan shot. And there was a, right after the movie came out, I I had posted on my Facebook about this, the scene because it was broken down beat by beat and how they did it and how they filmed it. And how they would bring in the stunt double for Charlize Theron, or you know the other guy. I think it's Theron. Ther- I've always said Theron. So yeah, th- but we're not going to go with your pronunciation. Of <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're just not. I-, I love you, man, but we're not. No, that's fine. That's fine. I- that's, she's she's an, an amazing actress, and if she were to show up and say no, it's pronounced this, I'd go okay. So yeah, but still, I was I I watched this little documentary on it, and it was just amazing at, at how this they did the stitching on it to make it appear that it was one pan, a one pan camera shot. Cause I always talk about how much of a, a you know, a, a nerd fan I am for the one pan shot, like in Serenity, like in Goodfellas, uh, Children of Men, Children of Men is another amazing one pan shot. Um, and, Several. Yeah. And this had such a good one, but uh, she also, she said in an interview that, that I also watched that, that she took a lot of damage filming this movie. Good. And she, she did a lot of her own stunts, and that was that was great. I, I think. wonder how many hit points she has. Oh, we'll save that for later. Well, <laughs> you know, I, hey, she okay. So I think her first movie, <laughs> her first notable movie, was um, Two Days in the Valley. First thing I ever saw her in was The Astronaut's Wife. The first thing I ever saw her in was that thing you do with um, that Tom Hanks she was movie. In that, yeah, she was she was the drummer's original her first girlfriend. I- don't but even, she had, yeah. It was before Hollywood said, "Hey, you're great, but we need you to lose a lot of weight because yeah. she was a little, a little thicker." No, no. She had like the Maryland, stay thick, baby, stay thick. 
Yeah, she had the Marilyn yeah. Monroe like thickness to her, and Can she I was get a witness. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then the next time I saw her was with uh, James Spader and Danny Aiello in Two Days in the Valley, which a lot of people say is a knockoff of Pulp Fiction. But it's the only thing it has in common with Pulp Fiction is it's several different stories that intersect together. Yeah, it's not a new gig. It's more like Love Actually, but with a lot of death. I recognized one movie you said in that entire paragraph. Pulp Fiction? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. But in, My first exposure to her was Eon Flux, and I didn't care for her. But in Two Days in the Valley, she plays James Spader's uh, girlfriend, and he plays a pompous dick just like every other movie he's in. And that's a good movie. You should see it. So I just recently watched on someone's unusual recommendation, A Million Ways to Die in the West. That movie is hilarious. I was surprised at how much Mm -hmm. I laughed at that movie. And it has Charlize Theron in it. And she is hilarious. Mm -hmm. I did not know that she was good at It's good to know she could act then. She she (laughs) had, she delivered the lines well. It felt, it felt like she was comfortable. Maybe that's it. I'm sorry. A lightning bolt has just gone off in my brain. Oh, dear Lord. Maybe she's the female Keanu Reeves. Well, maybe that's why she did the whole thing in yeah. monotone. Okay, I mean she's maybe done, the, maybe they were intentionally trying to copy that. She's done a lot of movies. I just, if she, she's done a lot. Of she movies. was the, so the was vo- he. God help us all. She was the monkey voice in Kubo and the Two Strings. Oh yeah, that uh, totally. She, she was, was actually really good. At she was movie. in Mad Max Fury Road. Oh, that oh that's totally. right. She was Furiosa. Mm-hmm. Million Ways uh, to Die in the West. Snow White and the Huntsman. That shitty alien movie called Prometheus. Uh, I still haven't seen that. I should because I love the franchise. We'll, we'll talk about it later. Uh, okay. She was Astro Boy. She was the narrator. Yeah, she's been in a lot of movies. Well, Charlie's there. You know, the some Italian people love job. Her, some people hate her. One of my favorite movies, but, a remake. It's, yeah. She, she can act. I promise okay. you, man. Right. Yeah. She can act. This movie, I don't think, was the best portrayal of her. It wasn't a acting. showcase. Yeah. I, physically, I thought she did an amazing job as a physical actor. I think mm-hmm. her, Actress, and I also me. think her stunt double did a lot of good jobs, too. Uh, even yeah. like I, I went off on this uh, in uh, John Wick about um, how he was acting when he was injured. Mm-hmm. She did something very similar, and she did an amazing job at it. Oh, I, I agree. As far as physical acting went, she was top notch. Mm hmm. Yeah, I just and like I said at the beginning, I don't know if it was a stylistic choice she made or if it was written as the character and she was just fulfilling uh, the writers what the writer saw. Mm -hmm. I just I did not care for the monotone delivery. I I didn't either. I think I think that it was more I've just had the holy fuck beaten out of me. Yeah, but she was monotone the whole thing. Every scene. Yeah, every scene. She had no when I make love, well, I, didn't... I make love with a monotone, <laughs> especially picking up a beautiful brunette in a bar. He didn't have to kill her. Uh, or yeah, my favorite I mean... line, my favorite line, the last line of the movie. I'm glad it was convincing. No, it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't convincing at all. <laughs> uh. I, 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 I really like the, the banter and the chemistry between uh, her and McAvoy's character. They seem to have really good interplay on screen. I thought I didn't didn't see really? it. Really, yeah. you didn't see it. He just annoyed the shit out of me, and she was boring. Did, well, did, I, did I, he annoy I, the I shit liked... out of you because you knew from the like the moment you saw him that he was like the bad guy, that he was the one that turned. He was. He was just. He was. I was just like I. I just hated him. He I did like the Sinead O'Connor hair. Comment. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was, was kind of good. That was apparently written in at the last. That was a joke at the last moment by the by the editor, if I remember correctly. That was a big deal at the time. You remember that shit? Yeah, yeah. yeah. A woman with short hair, not here. I mean, it was different time. You know? Yeah, yeah. I was I was happy to see the uh, the BMW bike that um, uh, what's her name, Sophia Butella rode that that BMW Roadster. Yeah, what's her name? The most pointless character in the whole movie. Her, she I, was I only underst- there to have another woman. I I understand that that yeah. that she was a plot device and she was supposed to move on and 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 help the the story. But yeah, I just kind of felt like she was a, a a total. I have a side quest for you. Yeah, please press A to continue. Yeah, that's how I felt with her character. The other who was the guy? The con- oh, there was so nothing made any sense to me. Like okay, I'm going over. To the wall today to go meet with somebody who's never been mentioned before in this entire movie and it's never going to be mentioned before after this entire scene and he's sitting on a roof for some reason 
I guess he's connected to a network. Okay, I've gotten information from him. And now we've gone on. I'm like, who the fuck was he? Why do I care about him? Yeah. He was way more interesting than you. Like, there's so much of this movie just moved in ways that made, I, I just like, I, what? I don't, <laughs> why are I you wish, doing this? I wish, oh, our faithful <laughs> listening audience, you could have seen his face just now. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's genuinely upset. <laughs> so what did, what did you guys, what did you guys think of, of just the character of Percival though? Uh, McAvoy's character. Yeah, he was annoying. He was annoying? Yeah. What did you think? I liked him. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't care to see him in his own movie. Mm-hmm. I just, I didn't care enough. No, true. But I, I liked his death. Mm-hmm. That he's he's talking about the 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 fetid swamp of Berlin, and he's like, and oh, I fucking love it. Boom. Yeah, I mean, there was I, I like I like a character that's content in its own filth. Mm-hmm. I don't like people. Who, I'm forced by circumstances to do things that I don't want. No, he was happy there, and he loved it, and I like that. I I like. If you're gonna it, be a villain, be a villain. I like from the moment that you 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 see him. Not not the photo, not the you know the file photo of him, but his actual first interaction. He first thing he shouts is "Money is good, information is better," and you know right then and there that yeah, where where he's aligned, and I like that. And you know he's gonna die before the end of the movie. Yeah, you can tell yeah. it's a it's a rough communist country when you can buy sensitive information for one bottle, bottle of Jack, Jack Daniels. <laughs> the in, uh, an interesting side note, you know how he had the the cast through the whole movie. Mm. So the he was filming Split at the same time that he was filming this movie. Did you guys see that at all? Nope. M. Night Never Shyamalan movie, which was actually it. No, I it didn't. was good. I was thinking of trying to think of a word, but I couldn't. I couldn't think of it. But uh, <laughs> they worked for the cast. Excellent, <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> no, Four stars. Redeemed, redeemed M. Night Shyamalan in 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 my in my book because it was a it was a really good movie. Anyways. Uh, he called the director and said, "Hey, I busted my arm on set because I it was had to punch a wall and I broke my arm." And apparently, the director like freaked out. I was like, "Well, fuck! What am I gonna do?" They worked it into the script with that plot point, but that's that's where they, they you know they put the microphone in. But yeah, the whole the whole movie, he actually had a broken arm, and that was a a real cast from him fucking up on another movie. Casts are great. Mm-hmm. This cast was okay. It was good. <laughs> Kick on. <laughs> yeah, I kind of figured something like that would come along. Oh, that's all right. Nothing wrong with a good John shot. Goodman was great. He yeah, I thought he was yeah. too. Everything that John Goodman does, every scene, every movie, he owns it. Yeah, yeah, I I agree. I've been a long. Also, time I want to grow Goodman. that beard when I get older. Yeah, me that, too. That almost Greek yep. out to the yeah. side mm-hmm. thing. Uh huh. That's that's a badass looking beard. Mm-hmm. Get all starry eyed though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As I'm trying to you know grow out a beard. Um, I give it a shot every now and then, but the fucking mustache, man! I can't do the mustache; it gets in the way of my lips. These, these, these full. Nathaniel's juicy lips. got a got a good beard going on here. It's nice and full down under Thanks. the chin area. Yeah, I'm running out for a costume, actually. Which costume? You doing Ming? I'm doing Ming. Dude, really? that's so sexy. Ming nice. is my favorite villain of all time. That's what I'm going to be married as. Really, oh, brother. <laughs> Very, very nice. I'm That's, happy for you. I'm, I'm trying to convince my buddy to come as Prince Voltan. Mm-hmm. Does he have the thighs for it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's a big hairy dude. Nice. And I'm trying Does to... Does he have that same personality? No. There's yes. only one Brian Blessed. This is true. He's close enough. He's close he's, enough. He's like a redneck Brian Blessed. <laughs> okay. You just imagine awesome. Brian Blessed's personality, but but with a southern accent. You just uh, toss y'all in there. And you toss some y'all in there. <laughs> that's that's my buddy. I don't know he's listening. Thanks, dude. <laughs> that's nice. great. I can't wait to see this now. <laughs> Seriously. No, Ming Ming is the best. Is Flash Gordon on our list? Yes, it is. Nice. Yeah, it is. Ah, Flash. What something else I liked uh, just with the design? We were talking uh, a little while ago how this whole movie is almost like a you know a music video because of the height of the MTV, uh, and it's very very eighties with the with the muted colors and then the neon everywhere. Uh, one of the other things that I liked about it was a lot of the 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 director used a lot of reflections, a lot of mirrors to kind of mm-hmm. see let you let you know what's kind of going on, but what's really not um i like when they were fighting in the movie theater that's always yeah. a good scene yeah and they they always bust through the screen because that's what always. screens are for that's what they're there for but yeah. I, one thing i liked is that they didn't pull close up for the bust it, it stayed wide it stayed a really big shot taking in a lot of the theater and they came through the screen instead of it's it's yeah. usually like they had to destroy a whole real screen instead of just getting a little piece and showing it later yeah it was pretty nice yeah i, I enjoyed that fight 
but my my comment a moment ago about the the thing I like with the mirrors of uh, and the reflections was that it allowed the audience to not really know what was real and what was deception or deceptive because the story also takes the viewer on a roller coaster ride of who's the actual good guy throughout the entire film which I, I mean you know who the good guy is but you didn't don't really a good person good woman whatever but you don't really know until the end I I like that twist that you yeah. talked about at the end I'm gonna go back to the fighting I like okay. her fighting she fought in a very disabling and ruthless way knees groin throat knees groin throat Mm -hmm. knees groin throat didn't attempt to stand back and batter at them with reverse roundhouse kick reverse roundhouse kicks and all this ridiculous kung fu shit knees groin throat ladies if you're listening just work your way up the body knees Knees, groin groin, throat throat. knees groin throat it's very important and there was a, a good fight coordinator Possibly the same one from John Wick. I believe so, yeah. Who just drilled it into her. And I honestly, I think she did a fantastic job. Uh, nobody went overboard with the... And then she kicks off the wall, spins three times, and plants her oh, stiletto like in his style, eye. Matrix style. Yeah. yeah. Just good, brutal, effective fighting. And I'm a big fan of that. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Knees, groin, throat. Very important. <laughs> there, There is... Yeah, with that, 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 that final fight, you know, continuing on that tail coding on that, just the exhaustion. I, cause a lot of movies you see a long fight either, either, you know, we, we always talk about star Wars at some point. So even with the lightsabers and, and how, you know, just physical that can be, or even a matrix style fight or John wick style fight, or this, you know, this, this style of John wick fighting, a lot of movies don't show that it is, you know, exhausting. And uh, yeah, I'm if you glad fight that... for more than sixty seconds, you are gasping. Now, just I, gasping. Admittedly, I haven't been in very many fights in my life. I've been in in a good number, but not a lot of them. And I haven't done any and had any recently. But yeah, it's you're swinging your body around. Uh, you 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 get out of breath real it, quick. It, it's not even that. It's it's how high your adrenaline r- raises. Yeah. Um, how alert you are. Every every nerve in your body is firing in mm-hmm. a survival mode. And it's exhausting. You you can flood your body with those chemicals, but you have to pay the price. And I I, I liked that they show that. I, I think that's that's a, that's a newer trend. Okay. And it's one I heartily approve of. You're not bulletproof, man. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I don't really have anything else to add to this myself. Um, it, I feel like for me the movie was kind of eh. It had its good points. Uh, I mostly found it a little banal, but you know, I I didn't. I don't feel like the time was wasted. It just wasn't my cup of tea. Yeah. Okay. So how how many? I, I, I I'm oh. sorry. Real fast. Okay. I, I would say I probably won't watch this again. Really? Yeah. But yeah. This was a watch once. I I'm glad I saw it. I I thought it was very interesting. I will definitely be looking up some songs because of it. And I think of it in as the not a pile of crap movie. But it's not something I'd buy. And even if I was flipping past Netflix, I probably wouldn't watch it again. Yeah. And okay. if I want softcore porn, I've got better options <laughs> already. Is softcore porn still a thing? Yeah. Yeah. Go oh, look definitely. at HBO. They yeah. still do like their softcore porn. Do they not have phones? Some people don't want the hardcore, all holes filled all the time. I watch softcore for the, the internet stories. Provides. Yeah. Tell me you're joking. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me you're yes, joking. I'm joking. <laughs> All right. Uh, so go ahead. No, it's okay. So how many, let's see, would it be how many, how many out of atoms? 80, how many, uh, what out of the eighties, out of the eighties, mm-hmm. 80 atomic wants. Okay. Okay. So it will then be 89 cause it was set in 89. So out of 89 atomic blondes, how many would you give it? Uh, myself personally, high fifties. Okay. It was, it was all right. Yeah. Same. So high fifties. Okay. Fifty-seven. Five. I'd, I'd go yeah. into the seventies personally. I I I like this. Yeah. Yeah. I, it it was good, but like I said, I'm never gonna watch it again. Okay. Yeah. I think I've seen it four times. I like it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I really like this movie. It's not as much as as it's not as up there as on like a John Wick level, and I didn't dive into it as much as I did with John Wick. But to me, this is a really good movie. This is a movie that, that my dad and I would have gone to see together. He, he, one, he really liked the lead actress. He liked probably would, would have liked everybody in this movie, but he was really big into these, you know, spy action movies. So I think it kind of holds a little bit more for me for that reason. Yeah. But, uh, cause it would have been a, Hey dad, let's go catch this movie and then go have lunch. But 
uh, yeah, I really like it in general. So I feel like if I'm going to watch an action movie of the movies that we've done, I will watch John Wick multiple times and mm-hmm. not this. Okay. I feel like Fair. if I want to watch a lady espionage movie, I'll just watch V.I. Warshawski a few more times because of Kathleen Turner, you know? Oh, my God. Yep. Because it's also funny. Yeah. You could also watch uh, the TV show La Femme Nikita, which was based off the TV show of the movie La Femme Nikita. Or the first two and only two, the first, only the first two seasons of Alias. I never watched Alias. Watch the first two seasons. They're great. Okay. What happened? Why don't you like the rest of this? Because J.J. Abrams fucks everything up in the third season. Always. <laughs> it's just a thing he does. J.J., you got some explaining to do. <laughs> yep. Oh, man. You went there. And on that note, let's pass it over to some talk about games. Yeah, I'm, right. I'm good for that. All right. Thanks for uh, hearing the movie side. Hi, everyone. This is your favorite host, Matthew. This week's episode is brought to you by Guardian Games, who we are proud to have as our sponsor. Guardian Games is Portland's largest gaming store. They have almost every game you can think of, be it role-playing, board game, card games, miniature games, even video games. They also have a ton of gaming-related material and some pretty neat swag. I mean, the D20 fuzzy dice that go in your mirror, that's good stuff. If uh, (laughs) if you're 21, uh, you can have a drink in the back at the Critical Sip. Booze makes gaming better. Always has, always will. There's free games back there. You'll love it. Uh, They also have a friendly and incredibly knowledgeable staff, and they are the hub of a diverse and friendly gaming community. Um, If you're in Portland, you definitely want to go to Guardian Games. I was signing up for WagonCon and it's a convention that I'm really fond of that's coming up here in May. And one of their things was fill out a comment form because I had a question to ask them that I could have just asked the direct, the, 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 uh, organizers directly because they're both friends of mine. But it's like, you know, I'm going to make this official. They've set up these channels. I'm going to push things to the channel because I probably want to see that channel working. Yeah. So I go to fill out this comment form. And at the end, it has this, uh, this captcha, you know, the, click here to make sure you're not a robot. I think what I they, you they reworded that. it, said, click here so you can prove to us you're not an NPC. And I was like, oh, I'm so <laughs> sad. Why are you discriminating against me? <laughs> so anyway, we are back from our break and we're here to talk about how to game this. And I'm sh- I've am i got a lot of ideas. I know Matthew's always bringing a thing. Ninjas and, and Super Spice. And <laughs> You've probably noticed by now that we've changed things up just a little bit. We're going to bring in the topics of how we perceive the characters in their gameable ways in this segment going forward. Mm-hmm. So, Dusty, yes. who, who do we got? So, right off the, the top, we have Charlize Theron. Not Theron. I was corrected a little while ago. Think Heron. <laughs> like the big um, white flappy bird. See, I always thought it was <laughs> Theron, but I'll say it however people want. Whatever. Thorin, son of Thorin Oakenshield. Okay. But her Playing last name is my dwarf. Thorin. My dwarf for showing. <laughs> okay. I love dwarves. Thank you. So do I. I always play a dwarf. Are we a dwarven party? Yes. Right? Whenever possible. Uh, I am a, yeah. usually a dwarven battle cleric. Usually. I just fight. I, I generally like dwarven clerics as well, or, or dwarven fighters. How else can you do? You know, actually, I played one of my favorite characters ever. Most of my characters ever have been dwarves. Mm-hmm. One was a gully dwarf thief. A gully oh, that's too bad. Why did you play a gully dwarf? Because I hated the GM. Okay. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's a right valid there. answer right there. <laughs> yeah, that's like, play, that's, that's playing, that's when you're playing a kender. You just hate the DM. But one of my favorite characters was a dwarven thief but it was ad and d in an ad and d second edition at mm-hmm. least you had all the thief skills but you got to spend points and focus in them every level and i focused in nothing but find and remove traps okay that was it that was all i did was find and remove traps mm-hmm. and detect traps because he was just a dwarven trap smith and he was the best by level three he was unstoppable at that so it's like, this is my niche. This is why you hire me. You hire right. me for this one task. I'm along and you're going to pay me. So he is a, he yeah. was a literal embodiment of competence porn. Essentially, I made a character who did one <laughs> thing very well. And then when the group was getting together and we're talking about what we're going into the dungeon, I made them work out a contract so they would pay me to do my job. They're like, cause you know, the party gathers together and, oh, we're here for adventure. We're going for adventure. So rarely do the players sit down and be like okay what's our what's our 
What's Charter. Our goal? Yeah. Yeah. What's our goal? How are we going to split things? We need to determine that right now. Mm-hmm. Who's doing what? And I successfully lobbied for them to pay me a shitload of money because I was there to keep them alive. Well done. They didn't have a cleric. It's like, well, you don't have a cleric, but you got a trap smith. <laughs> <laughs> That's the next best thing. Because an ounce of prevention is worth yeah. a pound of cure. All right. Uh, <laughs> so, I'm sorry. I just play a fighter because I, I feel dwarven in, in my real life. You're more hobbit-ish. I am just short, just tall. What? <laughs> it's, it's the fur, I think. Dwarves? Dwarves are yeah, fuzzy I fucks. Dwarves are fuzzy. I know. Yeah, I I, mean, I, 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 I think of myself as a very direct person. Mm-hmm. When I see someone fucking up, I will tell them right to their face. God, um, only more people would do that. I don't tolerate things I don't like, and I'll smack someone around the face if I don't like it enough. I I, I feel like a dwarf. Also, I dig holes. Yeah. Do you so, mine? Do you mine gems and? Metals? I I did build a mine into a uh, into a clay bank. Um, that I I made a little plaque uh, when I was twelve years old called the Mines of Moria. <laughs> oh, it went well, back about twelve that's feet. Adorable. It had three rooms. I had used uh, two by fours mm-hmm. to hold things up, and my mom didn't like it. And so I blew up the mines of Moria with my dad's black powder. It settled a lot of the hillside. <laughs> right on. That is awesome. I grew up feral in the woods. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, I, I dig. I, I like digging. All right. well, I dig dwarves. Dwarves yeah. are cool. Dwarves anyway, are that has nothing to do with the movie. It has nothing to do with the movie, but yeah. yeah. So we have Charlize Theron. That uh, dwarf. <laughs> who played Lorraine Broughton. Brighton Broughton. The protagonist of the movie in a fighting way. Um, so what do you, the two of you think? Her alignment. Lawful, Lawful evil. Neutral. What? Ooh. 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 No. Ooh. You know what? switch. No. Fight. Fight. I'll fight. Go. No, no, no. I'm interested. No, no, no. Don't change. I was Tell just me. defaulting, but as soon as you said that, I realized you're right. She wasn't evil. Because I'm going back to what I said earlier. She didn't kill people yeah. until they were trying to kill her. So yeah, <sighs> I would say Lawful Neutral. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Lawful Neutral. Okay. I, th- I think most of them were. James McAvoy? Playing, who played David Percival? Percival, fucking chaotic neutral. I, I, he was I went more chaos. evil. Yeah. No, he was chaotic neutral. He was every man for himself. But yeah, okay. yeah, and he loved it. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay, All he right. was the quintessential chaotic neutral. He, he, he had some. He had some madman yeah. in him too. I think he'd just been there too long. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, regardless of the yeah. reasoning, that, I right. think that's what he was. If this were a D and D party, he would be a chaotic neutral halfling thief yeah what did you think it was and why i just with with him selling everything out i just i did went more lawful evil to be honest with you it's hard to be a double agent and be lawful mm. though that's not fair because i just did a triple agent as lawful neutral so she, what the everything fuck do that I know? she was doing was geared towards her patriotism or yeah well we don't really know her motives we just know at the end that she's revealed to be an american agent the mm-hmm. whole time so, which was great. She was obeying the dogma of her country, just doing. I think interesting she should ways. have had a southern accent at the end. That would have been good. Like she had like this Olympia mixed with Northern California kind of voice at the end when she switched back to American. Mm-hmm. And I really would have liked if she if she came from south of the Mason Dixon line. I think that would have been adorable. I, as somebody who appreciates powerful and you know well done capable southern characters mm-hmm. i'm also somebody who hates bad southern accents mm-hmm. and i'm really glad she didn't come out of southern <laughs> at the end because i would have been like that's fake well you guys say she's a good actress so i mean she might have been able to do it well yeah i've never seen her play a southerner so i can't you know comment Fair. on that she has i'm just trying to remember what Although she might have done it better than anna pack one so, uh, yeah. <laughs> all right and then we have eddie marson who was spyglass who was just trying to make I sure his, him. He his was, family was okay. And yeah. Then, From the moment you, know. you meet him, I felt sympathetic to his play. Yeah. But he was like, twitchy also. But well, he was concerned about his family. But and he's twitchy. I, I found his concern for his family seem genuine. I agree with that. Yeah. I don't know that necessarily that he's a character, though. Yeah, he's I can an also NPC. go with that, too. He, he's, I, I, he's think he was, I think okay. he was saving the princess yeah. kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. All right. So an NPC. John Goodman? Character or NPC? NPC. NPC? Yeah. Sadly, yes. And then Toby Jones, also NPC. Which one was he? He was the one, the, he has a really big forehead that was in that same I, honestly, interrogation I, room. Of, of the. Uh, I think that was the characters. Honestly. Yeah, I think Lorraine mm-hmm. and. No, Lorraine and uh, 
Percival and Sophia Frenchie. Uh, Delphine. 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 Delphine, Delphine, Delphine could be a character. I think, like I said earlier, game. I said earlier in our podcast that I thought she was more of an NPC. Yeah, I, I thought she was. Yeah, the, I'm reaching. So the, I, the rogue I kinda, is trying to charm the bar wench, is yeah. what I got. Yeah, I I kind of look at this whole thing as this is a a DM one player scenario. Yeah, this whole thing it's is definitely two, two players. players. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's two players. everything is. It's an afternoon where you know you're sitting down with you're, you're like maybe introducing a friend to an espionage game or just in introducing a friend to just gaming in general and they wanted to play this and they wanted to play kick-ass you know female lead so yeah i think i think everybody outside you're right uh outside of uh charlise and james mcavoy i think are npcs and honestly i think most of them fall into the lawful neutral category well that will also yeah okay with their, with their even jobs, if, if yeah. you were doing the full write-up on the npcs mm -hmm. spying in its essence is a neutral thing <laughs> yeah you know i mean yeah. it's it, it's very geared towards tsr's old top secret uh mm. game so yeah that could be a well, good I forgot one about that yeah mm -hmm. that's you got that whole box set yeah i saw that at guardian games mm -hmm. like, that's a little a long weeks, that's a little long there <laughs> a few weeks ago i, I saw that box i see it every guardian once in a while games. yeah, yeah. With, I, complete with like the additional toys that it came with nice. too, like the. Because I think it came and, with a with a passport also. I think it just came with like gadgets and yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, to, to set the stage and the feet. It was we we can't do James Bond because that's already licensed. So here's top secret. Yeah, I, I think I think that wraps it. I don't really have okay uh, any more characters. Um, but do you have a story for us? I yeah. do, and you know, this time I didn't really have to rack my brain for it. Because it's painfully obvious what the next move is. Mm -hmm. Quick history lesson. After the Berlin Wall fell, there was, what was it, like uh, 2 million people mm -hmm. came from East Germany to West Germany. I mean, there was back and forth, just madness in the streets. It was described uh, by a journalist as the biggest block party in the world. And the Americans have this list. <laughs> oh, yeah. And they have yeah. unfettered access. And they have a huge crowd to move in. What do we think they're going to do? Start mm -hmm. targeting people that are coming over. Yeah, the CIA has a tremendous opportunity, if they move quickly, yeah. to co-opt or take out every last spy in Berlin. Every last one. You can either co-opt them or just shoot them. Now, what I envision is uh, Charlize Theron getting, okay, well, you had your vacation. We're not going to send you out, but you know the ground and you know the players. So we are going to send you with a team, your PCs, back out, and you're going to clear this list one way or another. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, it's it's container kill, and they'll though uh, Lorraine will be acting as the uh, as the intel source. Mm -hmm. She is the wise old man in the. She's the quest giver. Okay, she's got a question mark over her head, and <laughs> she'll go get this guy, and they go find, kill, contain that guy. They come back with its head or you know whatever. Then send out again, send out again, send out again. You could give the option again of if you wanted to play it as a campaign, depending on whether it's to kill the Cold War faster mm -hmm. or to extend it, which is, let's face it, the natural inclination of the CIA. You don't want to lose power. There's never a bureaucracy in the world that has voluntarily given up power. Mm -hmm. So... What I thought would be interesting is that after they go after uh, just the regular spies on the list, they'll get creative. There's still more work to be done. We're still necessary. There's always work to be done. So we, you could write this as an alternate future history, too, which I think would be interesting if you wanted to extend the Cold War. You just gave me an idea suddenly. What you got? We keep talking about John Wick throughout this whole episode and mm -hmm. all the connections to it. Here's an alternate idea of a follow-up to this game. Bridge the gap. Instead of Lorraine being the quest giver, mm -hmm. have Lorraine and her people be the villains. And in this game, you play the people coming over. You play the agents getting out of Russia or getting out of East Germany. You play oh, be fun too. a network of spies trying to stay alive and build a new industry that eventually like becomes, a whole new apparat yeah that eventually lays the foundation of the whole assassins network 
in John Wick. Oh, I like that. Yeah, that's that better. That sounds good. So it's a story of survival, finding contacts, rebuilding connections, establishing safe houses. Oh, my God. Because everything's blown at this point. Everything's yeah, blown, I mean, yeah. Everybody all, knows you. All so you now, have is your skill set. And they know who you are, so you have to basically reinvent yourself. And you have to find your contacts and stay protected and stay one. Could you do that as a party or is that a single player? The reason I went in this direction is I want oh, a, a party. party. Okay. You could do a whole party. Yeah. yeah a I'd, whole I'd group of people that, that like, good. look, we're the best. I'm the German. I'm the, uh, I'm, I'm the turncoat Frenchman. I'm the KGB. I'm the uh, American who is actually on the list as being bad. Mm -hmm. I'm the renegade Brit. We've got you know a whole crew from all across the world mm -hmm. who are joining together to form an Assassin's Network. Yeah, that'd be all right. Kind of like an Assassin's Creed. Oh, oh, Let, let's not oh. take it that, <laughs> quite that far. Those movies wah, were shit, and wah. we're never doing them. <laughs> no, shit, I agree with shit, you. I, I say. Agree. <laughs> I had to. It just, it lended itself so well right there. So I like, I really like that idea. That's good stuff. Yeah. I actually like that better than mine. I'd play that. Yeah. I'd play that. In a heartbeat. I'd run that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In either approach that we take, you're going to have a party. And both of them, there's going to be similar themes in that you're not going to have a party party. You're going to have a group of connected people who are not necessarily going to be together the whole time. Like you're going to have, each person is going to have a specialty. Like, because, you know, with an espionage game, you want to build a group who it's like building, it's like Shadowrun or Leverage or anything. You're going to have characters that are fully capable on their own in their field of expertise. And frequently there's going to be no reason for them to hang out unless yeah. they are meeting up to exchange information and then they disperse again. That's the reason I did it this way was because that would be a harder game to run. It's actually a lot more involved. Yeah. It's actually really simple to run, hmm. but you have to, you have to have some experience with it. But even if it's your first time, the, the biggest tip is, as a GM, if you're going to run that kind of an open play party, you need to step back from the dungeon crawl template. Mm -hmm. Right. You need to step back and look at the characters as people and realize that they're going to be doing different things. And you got to come up with a mechan with a you have to come up with your own GMing toolkit to handle that. And a lot of that is simply dealing with improv acting like yeah you have to be able to move the scenes quickly if somebody's doing something that takes time you have to be able to give that a moment cut to the other person doing a thing give that a moment cut to another person doing a thing and all the while you got to be taking a shitload of notes so you can tie everything back together you know what just popped into my head was that old uh really really old play-by-mail dungeon crawl do you remember oh that? oh my back god i haven't books? thought about that for years like in the back of comic books mm -hmm. in the advert section, they used to have that. And what I was thinking is that you, you'd set it up probably based on email or like a chat server of some kind. And everyone tells you what you're doing. And then you tell the next person down the line how that's affecting them. And oh, then okay. the next person hears how that's affecting them. And the next person hears how that's affecting them. So you have this, this living, constantly evolving world that people are accessing from different places at different times. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, yeah, a lot of note taking. <laughs> you know, they would, it would take some setup. But at the same time, like you could, you could evolve it far beyond and no one would know what anyone else is doing. Like if someone wanted to reach out and make connection to a, a, an ally, um, another, another player that would have to be handled through the DM until he can take them, drop them in their own chat channel. They discuss their things with him watching, and he decides how that affects the world and the other players at the table. So it's it's all secretive. No one knows what anyone else is doing except the DM. I think Ooh, that might be a lot of fun. That could be really fun. That's that's it's involved, but I think that could be a lot of fun. Yeah, because you that don't know. Be you, you're always on the edge of your seat, wondering if whatever move you do, because there's five other players. Mm -hmm. You know, rough guess. And they could be doing anything. This could be a very long term term kind of gig. I yeah. like that. I'm I'm a fan of long term. You stories. see, I, I like yours better than mine, but I, I'd want to see it implemented something like that, where there's partitions, there's firewalls to knowledge, not just sitting around the table going, "You didn't hear that, okay? You can't act on that knowledge. You don't know. You're just acting on the knowledge you have." You know, this is interesting, and it's reminding me of a game that I am now shooting myself for not 
having brought up when mm-hmm. we talked about John Wick. And it's a game called Assassin. But some people call it different names. There's Gotcha is another version of it. Essentially, the game is as such. You are all you all join together to play this game, but you're not going to be playing this game at a table. I've run this before, and this is how I did it. I got people to sign up in advance, and once a certain date passed, I sent everybody a, a packet, and that packet had a dossier on their target, what you know about the target, and you had a weapon. Your packet came with, like, a weapon. It could have been... Uh, tape. It could have been a squirt gun or whatever. We mainly just used squirt guns because of the way that we were playing. And then you were basically sent out into the world to go find that target, which was another player that you had to find and squirt. <laughs> and then once you killed them, that was a, that was kill. You gotcha! And you shoot them with a squirt gun. Once you kill them, you then take their packet and keep going down the line. That's now your target. Oh, oh that's wow. fun. It, I like that. It's a last man standing game. It's kind of a LARP, but at the same time, I'd be I'd be really down to play that. So Steve yeah. Jackson has a version of it. I think it's just <laughs> called Assassin. That's a published version of mm-hmm. this game that that adds a variety of additional weapons. Like one of the weapons that I remember is the roll of tape. And the roll of tape allows you to create the portal to the death portal. Essentially, you find a doorway, you roll tape all the way around the doorway, and you get that person to walk through that doorway. Uh huh. And when they walk through it, they're dead. It's just, <laughs> it's <laughs> I like it. The, the basis yeah. of that, you know, before you got into the Steve Jackson part, it reminds me of a movie that is actually called Gotcha, uh, that was done in the early 80s. And it sounds very similar to that same premise. So we, we did this at a convention as like a meta game that was mm-hmm. played throughout the entire convention. Mm-hmm. It was a lot of fun. Oh, it sounds yeah. fun. That, that, that would be good. I don't know what you're bringing to the table, but I think that kind of sums it up perfectly <laughs> i i we you you take what you said yeah as the setting and you take that system and then you car compartmentalize everything and then just send them out i i think that's fantastic i want to play that yeah that i didn't even think about that until we were just talking i do have some ideas of games that i think that that could pull uh an atomic blonde inspired campaign off any of the ones that we've talked about. So first off, we've talked about some of these before on John wick, Mm -hmm. because a lot of the themes match up hollow point. The one that we talked about with John wick, where you have the agency and the agency has goals. Well, hollow point has a version where you're all spies. Mm -hmm. So that would kind of match. Okay. Hollow point. I think could do it. If you're interested in that, you should listen to the John Wick episode because we go into real depth. Or you should just listen to the John Wick episode because we were fantastic. It's a really good good. episode. (laughs) And another one that I mentioned in that one was Haven City of Violence, which I think could also pull it off. We've also barely touched upon but frequently brought up Ninjas and Super Spies, (laughs) Palladium Games. What, what? If you like Palladium and you want to play this game, you want to play a Palladium system we bring Palladium up a but, lot. Yeah, we do. There's a reason for that. <laughs> it's yeah. the best around. <laughs> Nothing's going to ever keep you down. Talking it, to you, Laird. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, Ninjas and Super Spies could pull it off. It You, you just want to pick one of the more toned down character classes. Otherwise, you're going to have gadgets, gadgets, gadgets. Yeah. But it's clear that game is themed towards all styles of espionage play. So it's got something for everybody. And if you're already a fan of Palladium, I know who you are. You should probably check this game out. watches you. But you probably already have it because that's who you are. Yeah. And another game, we're going to go way back to episode two, Wushu. Mm -hmm. Wushu was the game that I I pitched for District 13. Wushu, yeah. The one where you just, the more you describe, Mm -hmm. the more dice you add. That... I really would like to do a session of just any game with that with that mechanic. I think Wushu could pull this off. Yeah. Very free form. You just you kind of got to throw some dice down and go. Have we has anyone at this table ever played Top Secret? When I, I was a kid. I saw it, but I've never I've yeah. never even cracked a book. When I was a kid, but we 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 were like 12 years old and it was just we were just kind of going off the cuff with a lot of it. Yeah. So just like as you do, as you do when you're, I mean, you're getting into gaming. You maybe a little, a little before that, but you know, you're not getting into the details of the mechanics. Because so. I don't know anything about it beyond that it's old TSR. The only time I ever played it was 
not actually playing it as a game. It was more my my brother introduced me to D and D, but the way he introduced me to it was like, "Hey, you want to play a game? Yeah, okay. You're a knight with a sword going into cave. What do you do? I'm yeah, like, okay, I do this. Okay, this happens. Yeah, that was he kind did, of the same way. He did one with me as well, where it's okay. You're a spy. You're going into this area. What do you do? I'm like, oh, okay. That's the only time I ever played anything remotely like that. Right. So, Dusty, what was the comic, the graphic novel that this was based on called? Coldest something. Coldest Night, I believe. Coldest City, I think. It Coldest was. City, yeah. Coldest City. All right. So, one of my favorite games ever, and it's one of the first indie games that I really got into, is called Cold City. <laughs> Cold City is a game of hidden agendas, trust, well, and also monster hunting. Can I see that? Yeah. Thank so, you. Cold City is a game that takes place in Berlin right after Ooh. World War II. So it starts at the very beginning of the Cold War, and the premise is you have a team of agents put together with the overseer, the Bureau of City Operations or whatever, the council that is built by all the allies to run this city in to transition it out of wartime. Mm-hmm. And you have a team of agents who are... Uh, you You have an American, you have a Frenchman, you have a Brit, you have a Russian, and you have a German. And you, you build a team out of that, and then you go hunt monsters. <laughs> but That's awesome. Let's just take the monsters out and replace them with secrets or spies or agents. <clears throat> the premise of Cold City is that Nazi experiments have gotten out and are like all throughout the the sewers of Berlin and the and the the U Bahn mm-hmm. and all of the tunnels and just running amok and you got to go capture them. But it has a really cool built in mechanic for trust. Okay, where you have a team that's of all nationalities, and whenever you build your team. Each of you writes down the name of another of each other person at the table, and you assign them a trust rating of how much you trust that person. Okay, and then you got to talk about why you trust that person and your feelings about that person. The really short version of it is: whenever you are working in a situation where that person is providing you assistance, mm-hmm. you use your trust for them as a bonus. So you get a trust die, and you add it to your pool. Okay. Whenever you were working against them, you take the die that they have as trust in you, and then you use it as a bonus die to act against them. So the more they trust you, the easier it is for you to betray them. I like it. It sounds it's good. Just a really simple die pool system where you tag attributes like I'm strong, I have connections, and whatever. I'm going to roll this dice pool. You can even get negative attributes. And you can use them positively, but if they roll, a, if you roll the black dice or whatever they're called for your negative attributes, and they roll low, then you take another hindrance or something. Is the is the physical copy of that book still available for purchase? Yes, okay, should be. Okay. So this is the first printing, and there is an addition. There is a reprint of it that has more clarifications in it. Mm-hmm. And then there's the follow up game, Hot War. Which is a game of friends, enemies, secrets, and consequences in the aftermath. London, winter 1963. It is a year since the Cold War went hot. This game mostly takes place in Britain, but it's essentially Cold City Mm -hmm. move forward 20 years. Right. And it's more or less the same mechanics. They have a lot of improvement in there. Mm -hmm. I like the trust thing. The trust is the trust at the same time. I want to play the game you described that you played at a convention. That's, oh, the that's, assassin yeah. game? That's the one I want to play. That's the one I want to play yeah. here. You could probably add some measure of, yeah. of trust to it. But uh, so, yeah, that's, I, I, I got to tell you that... The water guns? That I want, I want to hunt water down some, yeah. some other player and execute them. It was really freaking cool. Mm-hmm. And we actually had people stashed that had information. Mm-hmm. So some they were basically game masters of this this whole convention LARP that we were running. And this was 2003 Dragon Con mm-hmm. that we did this. And it was amazing. And the we had some game masters stashed in full costume, usually oh. like Columbo trench coats nice. or uh, whatever. Just th- somebody in a suit, somebody looking like a bartender, mm-hmm. just hanging out near the bar, but not really to dig bar. Okay, yeah. <laughs> but, and they they would just have packets of information. So mm-hmm. it's like the first person to come up 
would get information, but they would have to give information. So it got to the point that like you, you come up to talk to this person and they can tell you who else is hunting and they can tell you who's hunting you. But now they get to tell them who they're, it was, it was, it was a lot of fun. Like and that. yeah, it worked out very well. Yeah. We got in trouble because of squirt guns. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's, I'm, those look like very fun games, but yeah. I, I got to tell you, honestly, that's the, that's the one I want to do. <laughs> yeah. Although I do like that cold city flipping through the book. That looks interesting. And that's one I, I think I might want to get on my shit, my own shelf. We could talk about it more. The game is more later. It's actually heavily inspired by the Alan, uh, no, the, uh, Quartermass. Alan Quarterman? Not Alan Quartermain. <laughs> the, uh, Quartermass Experiments, I think they're called. I heard Alan and Quarter. I went there. I was like, yeah. I don't see that. That's how more that... Pulp Fiction, yeah. Pulp Fiction esque story. Not to be confused with uh, things movie. like Day of the Triffids, um, The Third Man, Hellboy. Okay, this game is pitched as think Hellboy meets The Third Man meets The Manchurian Candidate. Oh, wow. Uh, so, I yeah, like there that. was a series of British movies called The Quartermass Experiments. Mm -hmm. QA, Q U A T E R, Quarter, Quartermass Experiments mm -hmm. or something like that. Oh, God, it's been so long. That are these British espionage into the world science monster things. Oh, ooh, I'm going to look those They're up. really fucking cool. I'm, I'm probably not explaining them well. I, I, I but if you liked the third man, if you, what are they? and also a little bit day of the Triffids, it's yeah, another it one. A quarter, quarter mass. What? I think it's Q U A T E R M A S S experiments. Yeah. Something like that. Thank you. Yeah. They're heavily inspired by that. Cool. All right. I still want the squirt guns. Yeah. Yeah. yeah same here. Right. Same here. <laughs> what? I, I like them both. I, I want to I wanna, I wanna run through my doorway yeah. with a safety, with a squirt gun, making him chase me, and then show him the tape and be like, got you, motherfucker. <laughs> you are so exploded. <laughs> well, then you should. Boom. I think it's called Assassin. It's mm -hmm. Steve Jackson Games. Uh, I do have a fondness yeah. for some Steve Jackson games. So do it's I. Old yeah. school, yeah. too. Like, like, like around Ill Illuminati Early Steve Jackson. I want to say like, 80s Steve so, Jackson. Well, I think he did Illuminati. Came in a in box 80s. set. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was when the first edition Maybe came out. Someone's going to correct me. Okay. But I think it's Assassin. It's did, Steve yeah. Jackson. Did Steve game. Jackson do Ninja Burger? Yes. Okay. But if I was going to run this at the table, I would do either Cold City or Wushu. I yeah, Wushu. I I, I, yeah. I would like to try a game with Wushu. I think I Wushu think, could pull this off. I think being yeah. a you get. I think being a writer for me personally, the more descriptive would be fun. It's just an exercise to keep yeah. the creativity going. <laughs> so I'm but, all for playing Wushu at any point in time. But if we're gonna play this like as a LARP, mm -hmm. Assassin or Gotcha, yeah. oh, we're gonna play yeah. some Gotcha. You have to have bright colored. So what what are we actually calling the winner of this one? Because <laughs> this is hard. I, I, I personally, it. I think it'd be a tie for Cold City, and then the then the 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 squad gotcha. guns. Yeah, let's take a vote. I'm I'm in for Gotcha. I I'm honestly that that sounds fun. I'm gonna go with Cold City. Oh, I gotta break the tie. Yeah, yeah, you do. I'm gonna go with Gotcha. Okay, no, that's because cool. Because I can save this for for another thing. Okay, if we ever do the quarter mass experiments. Okay. Yeah, yeah or if uh, if they ever make a uh, Dresden Files movie that doesn't yeah. suck, yeah, yeah, that would work really well for that world. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. I would rather do that than the Dresden Files RPG, personally. Oh, God. <laughs> I wanted it to be good. I really I, did. Yeah, I wanted the game to yeah. be good. I wanted the series, the sci-fi to be good. And I had never read any of the books when the series came oh, out. Oh, fantastic. I've, I've read a few of the books, and I love them. I, I really haven't read the whole the series because there's like 17 the show. books. I like the show. It was all right. I read the books first, though, so it was kind of... Yeah, it, it enough hurt. books right now that I have to read, so... Yeah, you shut your whole mouth. There is nothing. No, there's, <laughs> there's nothing, nothing in the it. world no, 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 that no, is no, no, enough no. books. No, 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 no. <laughs> the, the problem is, is like I have this list of books, be it both you know, hard copies and digital books, and I'm like, oh, this sounds good, and I'm going to want, and I want to read this, and it's next on my list, and then I find like four or five more that I just add to the, the digital stack and the hard stack, and it's like, it's not a bad thing. I'm not complaining. Bad author, no biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> but I can go down the rabbit hole of of reading and not writing, and that's bad as a writer. No, it's not. As someone that wants to be published, not self published, but like published, published. Yeah, it is. No, that's just market research, baby. Okay, yeah, that's, that's all market point. research. That's a good point. I do, I do want to um, give a shout out uh, to a buddy of mine who helped ri uh, write. 
uh, my buddy Ben Werner, he did write and he sent us a, a copy to, to look over of Cold Shadows uh, from uh, Gallant Night Games, also through John Wick Presents. So where is um, this? It is called Cold Shadows. I sent you a copy. Yeah, we have a copy shared. Yeah. Yeah. It's on which of our servers? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, no we, we just, unfortunately, we didn't have time to read it. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it, I I've, I've went through it and I really liked. It. I I talked to Ben uh, a lot about during you know this game and it's very straight up Cold War Berlin. This it would do well yeah. with uh, with this movie. Uh, it is kind of in. It is, for me, it is a runner up. Um, and I uh, I just want to give a shout out to him and his in the whole. Wait thing. wait wait! Someone actually sent us a thing. How did I, how did I, this is the, literally the first time I'm understanding no, I, about this. <laughs> We've I, been talking about yeah, it. Yeah, we, we, I put it where, in our, where I put, we talking I put about it, it in our dev on chat. Our discussion group. Yeah. yeah. What? Yeah. I yeah. said, hey guys, here's the actual, like, I reached out to Ben and, and said, oh, hey, can we get a fuck copy me to running. This? No, wait, stop. Hold and everything. He sent it. No, stop. <laughs> did you? Now you're going to, now you're making me look bad, man. Well, you should feel bad. Where is I it? Didn't say feel where bad. is it? It would have Go been, uh, what, October-ish. Or, 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 oh, well, that's why. Or mid-October? No, I was after I started that at that that job. And I, I didn't and so it was maybe it would be early it, November. Or? I'm not seeing it. Oh, no, I feel like a shit. Deal with it later. No, no, I feel like a shit. This guy sent us this thing, <laughs> and it's perfect for what we just did, and we didn't even mention it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's good stuff. And- the fuck? Yeah, it's it's like it is straight up. I mean, even look at the at the at the cover. It is straight up, you know, Cold War in Berlin. Are you kidding? And the, he worked on this, and you yeah. know the guy. Yeah, I've known Ben for. I'm changing my vote. Well, hold on. <laughs> Here's what I recommend that we do. We should take some time, and we should read it, and we should comment on it. Yeah, it is we, good we stuff. Can add a little bit more. Well, as, well, as a follow up, as as because it's a, a runner up for 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 me, and yeah. not as the whole session because Nathaniel had brought. You know the the main stuff. Uh, let's do a, a. What do you guys say about we do a write up and just put it in? On, yeah, let's on do a write up and, and do a write up or, or jam out some thoughts on it next time. Yeah, and then we could also put it on the on the yeah. web page. Yeah, let's do honorable that. mention type thing. He sent us a game. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> Thanks, man. His, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ben's Ben's a good guy. He's he's worked on a couple of games and and uh, he's 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 invested. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, Ben, we're going to read over your game. Thanks for sending it to us, and we'll give you some comments on it after we're done. And Ben, you know Dusty, right? Yeah, yeah, I've known him. For- so you need to throw rocks at Dusty for not bringing it up last week, so it was fresh in our minds. I- rocks, <sighs> rocks, Dusty, large rocks, large rocks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. Well, thanks for listening. Um, so it was uh, Atomic Blonde, Atomic Blonde, and Gotcha, Gotcha. gotcha. All right. All right. <laughs> all right. Well, all right. Thanks for listening. Uh, we'll see you all in uh, a couple of weeks. I'm Matthew. And I'm Dusty. And I'm Nathaniel. Thanks. Thanks for listening to another episode of our show. We're a new name in the enormous sea of podcasts and appreciate any feedback that you can send our way. If you like what you've heard, or even if you didn't, please leave us a review and let us know. Got a movie or a game that you want to hear us talk about? Drop us a comment on our website at havemovieswillgame.com or hit us up on any of the usual social networks. We'd love to hear from you. The opening theme music is Rock and Gravel by Sid Valentine's Patent Leather Kids, part of the public domain and found on publicdomain4u.com. Opening narration is provided by Isaac Scher. Half Movies Will Game is distributed under Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives. Thanks for listening, and we'll catch you again next week.